I've been buying Bitcoin every day for about four years now. My investing philosophy has been highly influenced by books from Ramit Sethi and Burton Malkiel who talk about dollar cost averaging into great assets over a long period of time. Back when I started buying Bitcoin in 2017, I realized that I would forget to make my buys when the news stopped talking about Bitcoin. So when everyone talked about Bitcoin and the price was really high, I would buy. But then when prices were relatively low and no one was talking about Bitcoin, I would just forget. This made me realize that I needed a truly automated system just like the one that I used to dollar cost average into my 401k at work. So I searched all across the internet until I finally found a website called CoinDCA. CoinDCA was a website where you would put your Coinbase API keys onto their website and then they would dollar cost average for you every day. In hindsight, it was incredibly sketchy and you definitely shouldn't give your API access out to someone that you've never met before and who you don't trust. And as a programmer myself, I started to think that I should be able to build this exact same thing and not have to rely on CoinDCA keeping my API keys safe. The only problem was I'm not a very good programmer and I didn't know how APIs worked. But thankfully, there was a solution. A programmer named Dan Paquin had created a Python wrapped version of the Coinbase Pro API that was much easier to use. Unfortunately, since then, Coinbase has gotten rid of Coinbase Pro and when the world needed him most, Dan Paquin vanished. Months went by and I realized that I could be as good of a programmer as Dan Paquin if I had the help of the accumulated wisdom of the entire internet. So together, me and ChatGPT created a new Python wrapped version of the Coinbase Advanced Trade API. To help out everyone else who kind of sucks at programming and is forgetting to dollar cost average Bitcoin in this down market. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the Python wrapper that I built. I'll show you the code and how it works. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can use this code to fully automate your purchases of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency over on Coinbase. So go down below and smash the like button for dollar cost averaging and let's level up your brains. So if you Google Coinbase Advanced Trade Python Wrapper, it's actually like the third link. But if you Bing Coinbase Advanced Trade Python Wrapper, I have the first link, the second link, and the third link. If you ever need more proof that Google's reign of terror is over and that the time of Bing is upon us, this is definitely the strongest signal of that that I've ever seen. So if you just Bing Coinbase Advanced Trade Python Wrapper and then you click on this first link, you're going to be taken to the PyPy page. And then if you click on home page, you'll be taken to the GitHub. And then obviously, Obviously back on Bing, the third link here is the link to the blog where I give some background on why I built this Python API wrapper. And this code has actually been live since April. So if you do want to get any of this stuff early, definitely go down in the description and subscribe to the blog. Once you subscribe to the blog, you can come here to the GitHub and you can see some of the instructions for the setup. So first, all we're going to do is open up a terminal here and then we'll come back over to GitHub and copy this pip install command. We can go ahead and paste this command in terminal and hit enter. And actually on my machine, it's not called pip, it's called pip3. So if you run into the same issue, you can just replace pip with pip3 and hit enter. And we're seeing here that requirement is already satisfied. I've already installed the Coinbase Advanced Trade Python package here on my local machine. But when you do this for the first time, it's gonna run through a couple steps and download the package here from GitHub. Next, let's go ahead and make a Python file and then we'll open that Python file using VS Code. So we'll say touch, Coinbase AT demo.py. And then once we've created that file, we can just go ahead and open VS Code. And we'll say file, open folder. I saved that folder to my desktop and it was called Coinbase AT demo YouTube. And here is the Coinbase AT demo Python file that we just created in the terminal. So now that we have our empty Python file here, we can go back to GitHub and copy some of the sample code that I included with the Python wrapper. I tried to format this code here as Python code. And so there's weird like little quotes at the beginning and the end of the script here. You can ignore those and just copy the entire thing and then delete those little quotes at the end and the little quotes at the beginning. If you're watching this far into the future, hopefully I fix that and there's no little Python thing at the beginning and there's three quotes at the end are hopefully gone. There's definitely some little quality of life fixes like that that I need to do to the documentation. But now that we have this code in here, the next thing we're going to need to do is grab some API keys from our Coinbase account. So let's go back into the browser and open up coinbase.com. We'll go up to our pictures here in the top right and we'll click on settings and then we'll head over to API. Next, we'll go ahead and click on new API key. And so now it gives us this giant list of permissions that we need to fill out for Coinbase Advanced Trade. This can be very overwhelming at first. So if you're confused about what you need to include, you can just go ahead and click on all for wallets and select all for permissions. Alternatively, you can pick out exactly the wallets that you want to use. And on a previous Coinbase Advanced Trade tutorial that I posted here on YouTube, someone down in the comments posted this really helpful comment saying, I further played with the API to buy BTC and ETH with 
USD, you only need USD wallet, BTC, and ETH wallet. So let's go ahead and click on those, BTC, ETH, USD. And for permissions, you only need wallet buys create and wallet user read. And we'll go ahead and leave everything else unchecked so that we have better security with our API keys. So again, that was wallet buys create and wallet user read. And I think that these are in alphabetical order. So wallet buys create and wallet user read. So now if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can click on create and it will give us our API keys. So let's go ahead and copy this API key and go back over to the script and we'll put the API key here in API key. And then we'll go back over to Coinbase and copy the API secret, come back over to our API here and paste in our API secret. And again, you shouldn't share your API keys with anyone. I'm only doing this for demo purposes and I'm gonna be deleting my API keys before I upload this video. Otherwise, if you do give your API keys to someone, they're going to, in this case, be able to trade on your behalf, which is obviously something that you don't want to have happen. So here, if we return to the script, we can see that I've written a very basic buy Bitcoin function. You could copy this and replace it with a buy Ethereum function or something if you wanted to and change this product ID to ETH currency. And you can see we're defining currency here to default at USD but you could do that as GBP or whatever else if you're in some other country. You'll specify the amount of Bitcoin that you wanna buy. So in this case, we're gonna to try to buy 0.001 Bitcoin. And then you can give this function a limit price if you wanna create a limit order or leave it as none if you wanna create a market order. Market orders will fill faster than limit orders, but limit orders have lower fees than market orders. So I generally recommend that people go ahead and set a price and do a limit order. So if we just minimize this real quick, we can see that we're going to try to buy 0.001 Bitcoin our currency is going to be US dollars and we're going to optimistically set the price to be let's say 20,000. So if Bitcoin ever falls down to 20,000, we're going to be committing to buy 0.001 Bitcoin which should be a $20 buy order. So now if we save this script and we head back over to Coinbase, I'm going to go ahead and show you that I don't have any open orders. And then we should be able to see in real time my actual order get created. So if we click down here on orders, we should see that right now it's showing that I have no open orders. So let's put this side by side with BS code. And so now hopefully you should be able to see that when I run and debug this code, it's going to create that $20,000 limit order for about $20. So if we want to keep messing with this, we could say, okay, if I want to buy 0.002 Bitcoin at $25,000, I can save and run this again. And so now we can see a new limit order up there for 0.002 Bitcoin at $25,000. And then it turns out that with the sample code that I've given here to make a market order, you need to specify the amount of USD that you want to buy. So if we go ahead and run this again for $10 of USD, we can see that I just did one here, market buyer order that immediately filled. But if we go ahead and run this for you on camera, if we click run and debug, we should see that another market buy, it flashes up there for a second, and then it comes down there and is immediately filled at whatever the current spot price of Bitcoin is. But obviously, if you are doing a market order, your fee execution is going to be slightly worse. We can see that I paid a little bit less than one cent in fees there, five cents in fees here, and a little bit less than one cent in fees here for a total of about 0.6% in fees on this $10 order. Next, if we head back to Coinbase, we can click on the Coinbase Advanced Trader folder, and then we can click on Coinbase Client.py here. And this is basically where I've wrapped all of the different Coinbase Advanced Trade API functions. And you can see documentation for any of these functions over at the Coinbase documentation that I'll have a link to down in the description. And so if you are confused about anything that I've written here in GitHub, you can come over to this documentation, copy any of it, throw it into ChatGPT and say, can you explain this? This is the code that I'm trying to write. How can you help me write a function like this by Bitcoin function that is going to be easy to consume and do exactly the thing that I want to do with it. Ultimately, you should be able to write a pretty small function, especially if you compare it with the code that we had to copy and paste before over here in the previous tutorial that I did for Coinbase Advanced Trade that I'll have a link to up in the cards. If you look at the code that we were using in that last tutorial, it was 127 lines long. And if you look at this code here that I just wrote, it's about 51 lines long. I'm going to be releasing code in the next month or two that I think should make this even smaller than the 51 lines and start to implement other functions like the fear and greed index that's built on top of this Coinbase advanced trade Python wrapper. So really, I think that we should see this as a starting point and not an ending point. And I think that we're going to be able to build a lot of really cool code on top of this Python wrapper, including basically everything that we've already done here on the channel, like the fear and greed index, like the CM Williams indicator, and include a bunch of different indicators 
operators from something like the Glassnode API that's going to allow us to programmatically trade based on really any on-chain indicator and then automatically make those trades when we place our code up in AWS. And if you're new here to the channel, definitely check out the link that I'll have up in the cards where we used this code that I'm showing on screen here to automate limit orders up in AWS. This is the first API wrapper I've ever built and I'm sure that there's gonna be a lot of maintenance that needs to be done and documentation that needs to be worked on. So if you are a programmer, I really appreciate you critiquing what I've put out on GitHub. Link is gonna be down in the description so that I can learn more about how to properly maintain this repository. I'm hoping it can be helpful to the community in the same way that Dan Paquin's original CB Pro wrapper was helpful to me. Comment down below or DM me over on Twitter if you got stuck at any point or if you have any questions, I do still respond to all the comments. If you like this video, check out this video over here to learn how to automatically deposit and withdraw from Coinbase and check out these videos over here for more crypto API tutorials. I love you all. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>